Welcome everyone. Are you all waiting on me? I'm sorry. Hi. Of Kentucky Go Digital Live. My name is Heather Worrell with the Office of Education Technology and today is episode number three in our principal series showcasing innovative instructional coaching feedback and collaboration models. Last week we had Thomas Nelson High School principal Wes Bradley uh, and he showcased his model using Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Sheets. If you missed it, don't worry. You can always go back to the Kentucky Go Digital Live channel and watch it on demand. I am joined today by our Kentucky Go Digital Live team, Ms. Brooke Whitlow, the Instructional Technology Coordinator, who is joining us from the Hardin County Innovate Fellowship Google Trainer Boot Camp this morning. Hey, she guys. Will, she'll be facilitating the questions that come in from our live viewers. Uh, we also have Ms. Elaine Abernatha, the Technology Integration Specialist for McCracken County. She will be a tech tool lead for today's show. Hey, Elaine. Hey, guys. <laughs> and Ms. Courtney DeRossett, the Chief Information Officer for Floyd County Schools, who will also be a tech tool lead for today's show. Hey, Courtney. Hello. There she is. Today, we are ecstatic to bring you Principal Chase Goff. Chase is the principal of Caverna High School in the Caverna Independent School District, and he has a very, very special story to share. Chase, why don't you share it with us at this time? Welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Uh, excited to be here with you all. Appreciate it. Uh, can you see me? Am I good? The I came to Caverna um, last July, July 1 of 2000 and what was that 16 now? Uh, when I got here, I had been at a, a different school in a couple different capacities. And so when I got to Caverna, uh, we as a district were under state assistance. Um, and that had been something that had been here for a while. And uh, when I got here, I only have uh, 16 certified staff members. Um, I hired seven from July 1 until the beginning of school. So uh, we had a, a, a half of our staff almost was brand new and um, walked in the door and we, you know, there were the, the major issues and I tell everybody this um, really centered around culture more than anything else. And so to start that conversation, it, it started with um, really us having the, the conversation with teachers. I sat down individually one on one because I believe that every problem we had could be solved uh, within this building or within this school district. Um, and I will tell you, and I, I try to give them props all the time. I have an amazing, amazing staff. Um, they they will do anything and everything to try to better um, our students' lives, and you couldn't ask for anything more. And I give them major props on on any anything that we do. They they get um, they should get a majority of the the props for that. But um, really, what we tried to do more than anything else was change the culture and. Um, you know, I'm excited about tomorrow um, with the state data being released. We obviously have growth areas just like everybody, but um, I think you'll see a lot of growth across the board. And it, it really was not as much instructional change as it was just us looking at our culture and telling our kids like you're not a test score, but this stuff matters and this is why it matters and setting the culture with our teachers. Um, and so we've, we've seen a lot of really cool stuff and I'm actually I've been putting together some things for tomorrow because you know the the test scores are going to say a lot about us but there's a lot of things it won't say um, and that whole culture piece is something that you can't really measure in scores but you see it daily when when you walk the halls here so I'm really excited about some things we have going on and excited to share with you guys today so, so Chase, Chase real quick, real quick. Can you can you away away? Yes. we're getting a bad glare oh that is so much better thanks so much ladies that looks better right all right. So culture, uh, you're doing the big rollout tomorrow. Um, and I know one of the things that has really helped impact your culture is your digital workflow and making things more efficient for your teachers. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? So, um, you know, we I, I had used Google somewhat uh, before I got here and, and trying to, to move towards that. Uh, but Heather came and, and spoke to our district, um, I guess, right before Christmas break. And I tell her all the time, I was so upset when she came because it was like the week before uh, break. I had this lady from KDE that was coming to talk to us about uh, technology. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, here we go. 
and it turned out to be such a huge benefit to us. Um, we, we really tried to structure ourselves to where our teachers knew everything that was going on. They could get all their information in one place. Um, they weren't running around trying to find lots of this piece of information here and checking through emails on this one and asking uh, um, a question in a different space here. And so it really helped us when it came to collaborating, being very transparent, very open, which I think has really set the stage for the, the um, culture things that you've seen here. So I'm really pleased with all of that. So I'm going to get rolling here. Um, I'm actually going to screen share and should be able to see what's on my page. Um, all right. So for us here at Caverna High School, um, we, we talk a lot about this whole cave concept um, because we have two cities that make up our school district, Horse Cave, Cave City. Uh, we are just a few minutes down the road from Mammoth Cave. We are cave country. Um, our kids did some really cool stuff last year with uh, Hidden River Cave and some environmental work. So uh, the cave is really important to us. And so um, we refer to this place a lot as the cave. We destructure our schools based on different caves for our kids. Um, and so everything kind of revolves around this whole cave idea. And so a lot of the language and a lot of the things that you see today are really going to be um, uh, come back to this whole cave theme. For us and so kind of our mantra that we try to put out on on Twitter or on social media is we always want our kids to climb deeper a cave is the only place where you actually climb deeper most places you climb higher but in a clay cave you climb deeper and so um, we really want to always be pushing we always want to be moving forward we always want to be uh, getting better and all of that to say um, everything that I'm going to talk about today if, if it doesn't start if your culture is not right in your school none of the rest of this stuff matters um, because I think it can drastically help your culture by doing some of these things. But um, the reality is that the culture has to be right in order for us to be able to ultimately get to where we want to get for our students and get to where we want to be for our kids. Um, your culture has to be in place. So, um, you know, I was looking online just about some, uh, you know, different things that teachers think about. Uh, when they're getting observed and I think teachers are at a distinct uh, or at a, at a huge disadvantage because when they walk into a classroom they um, or when I walk into a classroom excuse me as an administrator I'm just observing I'm just seeing what's taking place I'm just there to observe but when a teacher's getting observed they have 5,000 things going through their head am I checking all the boxes I'm supposed to check are my kids acting right do I have all my materials you know all of these different things and so really I think a lot of these uh, memes I guess you say are, are very accurate because I think this is something that teachers sometimes dread they don't necessarily like it uh, but we know that evaluations observations feedback it's good for so many reasons uh, for teachers and so how do we make that um, you know something that's useful for them so once again um, you know, it's the whole idea that culture eats strategy for, for lunch um, all the time. It's going to come back to culture. So for me, kind of the starting point with that is uh, two things. Um, one, that teachers deserve feedback every time someone comes in their room. Um, I think the only thing worse than a teacher not getting feedback um, or, or excuse me, I don't think there's anything worse than that. I think the only thing worse than being told, hey, you need to get better, you need to do this, is not having any idea about that. So I think teachers deserve feedback each and every time some, an administrator or someone comes in their room. Um, and I think the same is true for teachers as it is with kids, that teachers deserve some type of differentiated learning or differentiated feedback because um, not every teacher is different. Their strengths are different. Their areas of growth are different. What they want to improve on is different. So um, I think teachers deserve that. So when it comes to the culture piece and it comes to um, walkthroughs and feedback, I think this is two really good good points. You know, you've got to have a way to give them feedback every time you go into the room and you got to be able to differentiate that for teachers because they're all different. So for me, that's my starting point with culture when it comes through walkthroughs and feedback. Um, so once again, we, we take everything back to the cave. So for us, uh, when you're in a cave and, and you're exploring a cave, you're climbing deeper in a cave, um, you've, you've really got a, a few things to know. 
Uh, one, you have to, um, you got to know where you are to get better. So, um, you know, if you're in a, if you go cave exploring, you have to know where you're good at and what you need some help with. That's the first safety tip. Uh, second thing in a cave is you never cave alone. Uh, you never go caving by yourself. Third thing is you always make sure you have the right equipment and all that comes down to the fourth thing. You got to stay alive. Whatever we can do, that's, that's the goal to stay alive. So that kind of forms the basis of everything we do with walkthroughs and feedback. So the first component to this is you got to know where you are to get better. Um, one of the things that we as a school district did was when we sat down last year and we realized that we had some flexibility um, with the teacher framework and the evaluation system and all that, we said, what can we do to make this a better process? So um, this idea that teachers need to self-reflect, they need to know um, where they are, they need to know how to get better, um, what they want to improve on. Teachers are professionals. If we give them that opportunity, they can they can do that. That's that's part of what they do as a professional. So um, once again, I think when we go do observations as administrators, it's really simple for us to sit back and say, well, these are all the things we observe. And a lot of times when we um, teach that to, or when we go in and we tell teachers, hey, this is what I saw. It's not that they are intentionally trying to not see it. Uh, but they they are just got so many things going through their head. So what we did was we had teachers video themselves and we used a tool called Swivel. Um, Swivel, it's uh, they send you these cameras. You actually put a little microphone around the neck um, and it follows the teacher. The camera does. It's very compatible with iPhones, iPads, anything. Um, and then that video is automatically uploaded to the cloud, converts really easy to YouTube. So our teachers. Um, took the videos of themselves and then they reflected. And so we just used a Google form um, that looks like this. And really all this is, is the framework and the domains and it has them reflect. So you can see here, we just asked for their name, the link to that video that they did. And then they go through here and they self reflect and we get down here to the bottom and they describe their areas of strength and their areas of growth. Can I um, can I have that back real quick and talk about that swivel? Do, do you know um, what other ways are you guys using this in the in the building other than just teacher um, teacher observations? Are you using them any other way? Sorry. Um, yeah, we are. We we actually well we're. Oh, hold on. Hold on, I think you're muted, Chase. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so we started, we just had one camera, and so it was just everybody needed to get this piece uh, that they wanted to kind of reflect on. Um, now we've actually ordered two additional cameras, so we have uh, multiple ones. Our teachers, a lot of them are talking about using those to help flip the classroom. Uh, we run on a trimester schedule, so um, a lot of what is taught in the first trimester, that class might be re repeated second trimester. Um, so they're able to video themselves and utilize that next trimester. Um, so that that is one piece. Um, and our teachers, that's been a point of discussion in our uh, learning teams the past couple of weeks is how can we utilize that technology uh, to do more instructional things as well. So um, it's evolving, you know, and so I, we'll see where it goes. Awesome. Okay, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You've got, so you were talking about forms and you were, which brings us back to the last time, um, actually our first one, we were working with walkthroughs. And so those forms created um, uh, the walkthrough information. And so that's where we left off. All right. So, yeah, so, we had teachers, they, they videoed themselves, they self-reflected using that Google form. Um, and so that was the first component. And we let teachers kind of identify those growth areas for themselves based on just watching themselves teach. And a lot of really cool stuff, simple things like I stay on this side of the classroom or I don't give kids enough wait time or I ask the same uh, five or six students questions or just simple things like that that you're able to pick up on. When John Hattie talks about micro teaching, this is really a lot of what he's talking about. Um, and so we gave our, our teachers the opportunity to, to self-reflect using that technology. 
so then this idea of never caving alone. Um, so we have our schools divided up into teams and one of our primary teams is our learning teams or our PLCs. And so last week, if you didn't watch um, Wes's video, they do some really cool stuff. I think he calls them spacewalk. Um, and they do some really neat stuff with getting teachers into classrooms. So for us, one of the things we wanted to do was utilize this technology uh, to do something very similar. So our teachers and their learning teams are in their PLCs. They take those videos and then they watch each other's and um, they upload them to YouTube. They share that link. And then in a PLC uh, team, they reflect on one another's work. And so we utilize a we utilize protocols for that. Um, we have some pretty structured protocols in our, our PLCs or our learning teams. Um, we utilize a Google Doc uh, for them to, to do a peer review or peer reflection. So each teacher goes in, they write the growth areas that they've identified in their when they watch the video and self-reflected. And then each teacher goes through and just basically types notes of what they observe, what they see on the video, um, you know, just some, some feedback. And then we walk through together some plus deltas for each growth area, um, and really give some teachers, we end with a commitment for what they want to do to improve. This is really important for me as the administrator to get to the, the bottom of this and say, okay, what can we do to improve? Because it allows me to really differentiate for each teacher. Um, do they need to go, do they need a training on something? Do they need a resource for something? Do they need to go visit another classroom for something? It allows me to really identify what I can do to help them grow um, in the areas that the teacher has self-identified as a growth area. Um, hey Chase, can I, uh, somebody mute Chase for just a second. I wanted to hop in. You gave a really neat analogy the other day about your decision to use swivel and have the teachers tape themselves. Would you uh, share that with us? Something about you being a coach and watching tape? Yeah, so um, I, you know, I, I, not scared of this. I think a lot of people are in this boat. I got into teaching primarily to coach initially. Now it's obviously evolved since then, but that was my uh, initial key. And um, when we would watch, you know, when you coach athletes, film doesn't lie. I mean, it just, it, film is what it is. And so that was really the same premise behind the whole swivel idea is that film doesn't lie. And it's not a, once again, it goes back to culture. Like if you don't have the right culture, it can, it can get a little crazy. Um, but if you have the right culture in place and your teachers are really able to look at it and see, wow, this is something I really didn't even notice that I was doing or I really didn't even realize, you know, this was taking place. So um, it, it is a lot like coaching and, and having athletes. And you have to tell them all the time, film don't lie. <laughs> so Brooke's been uh, monitoring our live feed. Brooke, you want to chime in with some comments you've received? Brooke, we can't hear you, darling. Okay, how about now? Can you hear me now? Okay, you guys are going to have to forgive me because I've got two events happening and I'm walking back and forth between rooms and it's kind of chaotic. So I don't even really know if I'm coming or going right now. Um, but we've got a couple of comments. One specifically is about the culture and about um, building all of that around a common theme, much respect for your creativity and hard work. And that comes from William Jones. Um, but I wanted to chime in too on your, um, you're talking about coaching and a coacher philosophy. And I can't, I cannot think or hear the word coacher without thinking of, um, Mark Kopp, the superintendent at, at Franklin County schools and that whole mentality of, you know, treating our teachers like coaches and the, the end of year assessment. I mean, that's the autopsy and that's, you know, it's like you can't do anything about it then because that's what. And then so going through and watching game film and watching tape and all of that is just, I think so powerful. Um, and he talks a lot about that too. And ironically, you're, you're talking about the swivel camera and having teachers um, film themselves. And I was, it, it may have even been you on Twitter that we stole that idea from. And there is literally a meeting that is about to happen at one o'clock today with our director of curriculum assessment um, for elementary 
and a few of our Innovate fellows in the other room because what was happening, the, the teachers were needing those exemplars to look at and observe. And so they were sitting around a table just talking about and trying to figure out solutions to all these hurdles with the statewide budget freeze and how are we going to coordinate subs and what's this going to look like? And so I think your idea for having the swivel and, you know, having teachers teach themselves, I'm really interested in that piece too, specifically because I'm going to take this video right now and send it to that team of teachers and administrators that are going to start working on that project here in Hardin County. Um, just for that, for that reason, we want to be able to, to create a system that's that le that's least intrusive too, because having ten people walk into a room in the middle of a lesson, I mean, that's not distracting at all for a room full of kindergartners. You know, I mean, you just can't do that. So I just I really like your idea, and the culture piece is is obviously important too. Oh, hang on, we just got Melody Stacy just commented, and she said, "I'm looking into the swivel right now." Totally stealing that idea. Look at you, Chase. You're just like sparking fires everywhere. Um, she says, love the focus on self-reflection. So powerful. So thank you, Melody. And um, so, yeah, lots of comments coming in. So this is exciting. Guys, how much does a swivel cost? Um, well, I'm going to give props to Amanda Abel, who is our assistant superintendent, because I don't know. I said, Amanda, I need these cameras and she gets them for me. Um, I do know initially up front, I think there is um, probably several hundred dollars to get the actual tool because it does, it's like a little platform that it's on um, and that you can set iPads or iPhones in and then the microphones that go around your neck to be able to move the camera to be able to pick up on sound. It also comes with additional microphones. So you can have those at kids tables like if you've got group settings to pick up on conversation with them as well. Um, so I think the initial upfront cost is is probably um, I, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to figure that out. I just, I say, Amanda, I need these and she gets them. So, um, but the, like, I think once you have the pieces in place or the tools, I really don't think there's much cost to it um, after the initial investment. And I, I just throw in there too, you know, like Brooke said, I, I think the really powerful part of it is that you pick up on a lot of things that you may not even be looking for. You just notice or you see about yourself um, that, you know, you just really, and like I said, you would have conversations, you would have post, and I love the analogy of the autopsy. You would have post conferences with teachers and you would say things and, um, you would say, I noticed this. And it's not that they're trying to, to hit back at you on it. It's just, they really didn't observe that they didn't see it. And that's the beauty of being able to look at film and look at a camera and, and just everybody kind of sees the same things. Um, and you're able to kind of, pick that stuff out so and I'm sure there's other technology I don't know if there's other places that use other types of cameras I just know we use swivel uh, but I'm not sure what the other things are that exist so I'm gonna go back um, and slide share here and finish this part um, all right so once again we use those protocols uh, to really get our teachers to um, you know, analyze them as a group because I think our PLCs have a really uh, tight focus on learning and helping each other. Once again, that's a huge culture thing. Um, our P, uh, just, I really value our learning teams, our PLCs. It's a great time. I'm in each and every one of those every week, which gives me really valuable time as an administrator uh, to talk with those groups of teachers. And so they just allow that um, to ensure that, that we never cave alone. So this is kind of the more um, technical part. Um, I actually use two different walkthrough forms and um, I will I will explain both of those. Once again, it goes back to the initial component of teachers deserve feedback every time you go into their classroom and they deserve differentiated feedback. And so I have two different forms. I have um, the first one I'm going to show you, a, a stalagmite in a cave comes from the ground. It's very organic. It comes up. It's, it's part of the, uh, um, uh, it's just, it's an organic thing. And so um, that stalagmite walkthrough is what I use for our really instructional coaching ideas. 
Um, and this is what ours would look like. So at the beginning, at the top of it, um, we have our teachers list. What are their growth areas and what are they trying to do uh, to ensure that they're meeting or trying to get better in those areas? And then here is where, uh, much like Wes talked about last week, we have uh, the coaching tool. And so teachers come in here and they will put in what um, they've identified through their self-reflection, what they want us as, as administrators or as uh, whoever that walks in their classroom to try to assist them with. And so this comes from what they have identified, um, which really helps our teachers buy in because it's not somebody from up top saying this is what you need to do but this is what they've identified as teachers that says this is how i want to get better and that's where this comes from i tell my teachers when i do these it typically is going to take me uh, at least 20 minutes or more because i really want to get a feel for the classroom you can see there's other things we look for like pbis fidelity that's important to us here we're really trying to get kids um, and our teachers to buy into this idea idea of world readiness and what that looks like and then we always want to have culture as a primary component of what we do so when I walk into the classroom I'm the collaborator so um, I walk in and I'm really just writing some things I write reflection questions um, I write uh, where I'm seeing on their professional growth this is you're doing really great at this or have you thought about doing it this way to, to try to help with questioning and discussion techniques if that was their growth area. So um, I write my notes in here and I would, you know, I would just say like today is September uh, 27th and then see golf. The other great thing about this is that we have district level walkthroughs. I'm the only administrator in my building, but we do have district level walkthroughs where our superintendent, assistant superintendent, other administrators come in and they have access to this. So they know exactly what I've told a teacher um, for the last you know, three or four times I've been in their classroom, so they can build on that, they can expand on that, but um, there's no question about what we've been talking about as, as a teacher and a collaborator. So I'm the collaborator, and then all of my teachers, um, and I'll give Wes Bradley some more props because we stole this from Thomas Nelson. Um, all of our teachers, we refer to them as leaders because uh, they are leaders. They're leaders in their classroom. They're leaders in this building. And so what we do is they go in and they reflect. So I'll usually ask questions, give thoughts, give feedback, and then I ask them to do the same over here. So it's a, it's a very transparent process and it allows for collaboration to occur. Um, which is which is really helpful. Another trick that I do, just trying to get teachers started. A lot of times, you know, they got a lot of stuff going on. Teachers do so that if they forget to do it, or it takes a while to get in this habit. So I'll just insert a comment um, over here in in this section. Excuse me, whatever you know their name. Please insert comments, and I will. Um, Put in the comment here and then I will tag the teacher so if you do plus and put in their email it actually will send them an email to remind them which is pretty helpful for our teachers especially on the first few of these that we do um, so this, yep uh, so I don't know if you know this or not but Rob Bulk over at Moore uh, Marion C Moore School and JCPS he's also using a very similar form as well so both of you are, are trying this out. And I, I'm, I'd be interested in the next year to hear about your glows and grows with uh, implementing this. Just yep. to have, I didn't know if you knew that or not. Yeah, I saw his, uh, he, yeah, he, I follow his blog some, and he, I think he did a blog post about it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really helpful tool for, you know, everybody to be on the same page. Everybody knows what's being said, how we're trying to assist, how we're trying to work. So that's all in, in, in this component of it. So the reality is, like I said, I, I do two. So this, the stalagmite or the mites walk through, you know, it takes, um, you know, like I said, at least 20, 25 minutes of me being in the classroom. I really, my personal goal for myself is to visit every one of my classrooms every day. Um, I've only got, you know, 16 or 17 teachers. So, that's a little bit easier for me to do sometimes, but um, I don't always have 20 minutes. So the next reality is how do I make sure that once again, teachers get feedback every time an administrator walks in and it's differentiated feedback, uh, but it's not necessarily going to require the 20 to 30 minutes of actual coaching time. So how do I make sure that happens, which is where I use a Google form. So on my Google form, 
Um, I'll pull it up. So these are all my teachers in the building. Um, you know, they, this is all of them that I would do a walkthrough on and I put them in by email, which I will explain why here in a minute. Um, then we just, you know, these are the things that we're just quickly looking for. Are students engaged, teachers engaged, are learning targets posted? Can students tell me what they're learning? Um, you know, is the instructional culture where it's supposed to be? What kind of strategies are being utilized? But then once again, so that gives them feedback every time we walk into the room. However, the other component to that is um, it's got to be differentiated. So how do I differentiate this for um, each of my teachers? So what we've done is each PLC here at Caverna has a specific strategy that they're trying to work towards. So in ELA, they're really focused on vocabulary, and that comes from discussions, looking at data, looking at um, assessments, where do our kids need some extra assistance and help. So they're really focused on some vocab strategies. Um, our science CTE is really looking at metacognition. How can we promote that in the classroom? So they each have different things. So in this box right here, um, I select the learning team and based on which one of these I select that the teacher is a part of, it's going to take me to a different section. Um, and I think Courtney's going to kind of show you how that works here in a little bit, but it's going to take you to a different section. So if it's ELA and I select ELA, it's going to take me here and it's going to, is vocabulary instruction part of the lesson design? and how is it being used in the lesson. So it gives that teacher as part of that learning team or that PLC, it gives them some very targeted feedback on what they're supposed to be doing in the classroom. Um, so that's the form that's built. And I believe that I have a, um, a blank form that's part of the um, resources that you can get. But here's the next part. So um, I when I, do the responses okay there's the sheet here that takes me to um, the responses sheet and what I'm able to do so I've got all my responses in here this is where I use formula and so I'm going to walk you through formula and why I believe it's so valuable as a uh, administrator so um, it's an add-on just like anything um, else is that you can do with Google so you're going to go to formula you're going to once you get it if you get add-ons, add formula, once it's here, you're going to open the feature. And formula really allows for um, some, some feedback based on um, very targeted things. So you can do different stuff with formula. Um, you can either trigger the form to be sent at a certain time. You can trigger it to be sent when a form submitted. But what this is going to do is it's going to generate an email of the information that you just filled out in the form and it's going to send it immediately to the teacher, um, which is really helpful because it doesn't require me to have to write something on paper, go make a copy, go put it in a teacher's mailbox or go talk to the teacher about it. It instantly happens, which is very useful. Um, so once you kind of make sure you have the correct um, sheet that you're using, you go to these templates and the, here's the really neat thing about formula. You can use up to 10 individual templates um, based on certain conditions. So um, I have a, if they're part of the ELA learning team um, and the ELA is selected, then they're going to get a different email than what the math folks are, than what the science CTE folks are, and what my social study and electives teachers are, um, which is really convenient. I've seen other places that have used Formule. Um, if you have multiple administrators that handle discipline, you can set a template to where um, if they are, like if it's a student that's a ninth grader, it goes to some uh, one person's email. If they're a tenth grader, they go to a different administrator. Um, you can use it in a lot of ways. Another way we use Formule here is I have students, if they want, uh, if they need a support service, myself, the counselor, a family resource, or um, the nurse, if they need to see one of us, they can fill out the form. And then based on what they select, it would go to um, you know each of us individually. Um, so it's really convenient to be able to um, utilize different templates to send to different folks. I would assume I've never been in the elementary setting, but I would think that you know your kindergarten, first grade classrooms would probably look a little bit different than your fourth and fifth grade classrooms. 
So instead of having multiple forms you have to create, you can create one form, but then utilize Formule to send targeted feedback to those teams. Um, so once you save your template settings, it's really easy at that point um, to, to set it up. So next you're going to create the template for each one. So up here at the top, you know, this is the ELA template. So all I have to do, um, you know, I, I just simply push these buttons and it's going to tell me. So the reason that I put my teachers in as their full email is because once I put in um, this teacher tag here, um, that's all I have to do. So it'll automatically send it to whatever teacher I've selected. Um, you can write in information. So I wrote in here's the feedback from your walkthrough. And then you just go through here and click exactly what you want. So you can see this is the ELA template. So I have gone down and they have the vocabulary piece in here. If I were to select the math template, they're really looking at math stamina. How can we have them solve very complex problems and create that stamina for our kids? So you can see that's part of theirs. Um, if there's science and CTE, you can see the metacognition components are in here. Um, social studies and electives are looking at cooperative learning, so you can see that's part of the template. So each template is unique based on that feedback of that and what that PLC is trying to work on and, and get better at. So um, those are the different templates. I'm not going to send them because all my teachers have already got feedback, so I'm not going to push that button. But then you just preview and, and start sending, and then every single time that you were to do a um, – this is saved on my phone, so I go around with my phone, and I can just go through here and complete this walkthrough. Um, like I said, I'll get down here to the bottom, select my team, which team they're on. I'll complete the form and it'll automatically send an email to the teacher. So they get feedback every single time I go in their classroom. This takes me five, six, seven minutes. It doesn't take me a, a great length of time. And um, it's very targeted to them because it's based on their content and their content area and what that learning team has decided is their major areas of focus. Um, so that's kind of the formula aspect and how formula works. It's really pretty simple, but those are the two um, that we use. And so um, in addition, one other thing that I like to do without getting too technical is um, in this responses down here, I create a tab for each of my learning teams. And so in the ELA learning team, I'm able to go up here and in this first box in A1, I write this code. Now this is a code, uh, but I've got it saved on my slides, which I'm sure will be available to you. And what this does is it basically says all the information in form responses one from A1 through the last column that I have where it equals ELA, those are automatically in this sheet. Same thing with math, same thing with science. I don't have to do anything else. So once a form is submitted and I submit that form, it automatically shows up here in this sheet. The reason I do that is so I can look specifically at each PLC. That's part of those weekly discussions with those learning teams is how are we doing as just a learning team. And I recently found a new feature, a new add-on um, called Advanced Summary or Awesome Table Advanced Summary of Responses that allows me to look at those specific sheets. So this is the social studies electives uh, learning tar uh, le uh, team. That's the, it's pulling from this sheet right here, this information. So I go to this and I can instantly got cool graphs. I can see what's happening. So these are able, we're able to have these discussions as part of our um, weekly learning team meeting. So it gives us a lot of good data points that's very targeted and very specific to that group of teachers, which is something that I really like about it. Um, so that's a really simple way to, to kind of separate all of your responses and kind of get a very specific look at each of your teachers. And then the last thing I think that's important from, from my end is that this is living. So the idea is to stay alive. So this is not something that we do in September and then we stop doing it. So this is always happening. It's always evolving. So like I said, um, you know, we run on a trimester schedule. So pretty much each trimester, our teachers self-reflect through video. They peer uh, review each other in learning teams and they update their walkthroughs because 
the reality is if a teacher has identified something in September or August or September that they want to get better at, and by November, they're really comfortable doing that. They've implemented new strategies. They've been to different trainings and got ideas, whatever it might be. Then they don't need to keep working on that same thing in March. If they've got it, they've got it. Just like kids, if we don't want to keep, if they've got it, they've got it. We don't need to keep teaching the same thing again and again. So for our teachers, it's important for us to do this on a cycle so that when they self-reflect again and they notice, well, my classroom management is a lot better now. Uh, but I really want to try to get better on questioning and discussion techniques, um, then they're able to change. It's living, it's evolving, it's not staying the same, it's not static. So um, that's important for us as well. Um, so that's my um, kind of spiel, and I'm going to get off screen share. I'll tell you what, Chase, I was frantically trying to tweet things and quote you. Uh, the idea is to stay alive. I'm like, that is definitely something I need to be tweeting. So I was frantically tweeting so many pieces of brilliance from you. So um, very complex system for principals just getting started. Uh, one thing that you showed was how you use the Google form to give PLC goal aligned feedback to teachers. Uh, and so now Courtney, I know last time we showed a little bit about how to make a Google form and, and maybe a couple episodes ago, but let's talk about an advanced feature on a Google form for anyone who might not know about this. Courtney? Okay, um, when I love how Chase, um, you really personalize that to your teachers and what they are, um, what they are talking about in their PLCs. You're not just, um, you know, giving uniform feedback for everyone. And if you're watching this and you're wondering about the part um, on his form, which we made this a little Kentucky Go Digital, hopefully um, we'll have this as a resource for you to look at. But if you look at the teachers and you have your norms that everyone is going to be getting, you know, the same stuff. But then when you start with things that Chase mentioned that he talks about on PLCs, in order to set up this option right here, um, when you set up this option, when you go to a multiple choice, if you go and you want to add a multiple choice question, when you add that question, at the bottom, it gives you the option for you to be able to share, to go to selection based on answer. So no matter what you have on your question, you can select this. Um, so you can see here that Chase on his form on learning team, when he selected this, he has down here that he indeed wanted to show, he wanted to select go to selection um, to section based on answer. In order to go to these sections, you have to have sections. And sometimes we don't know all the features that are along the side here, but if this bottom one that's got the double layer for add a section, you can see that Chase doing with his form. So he thought about what did my English department, my ELA, what is their focus? What, what is my math focus? So instead of just putting that all, if you go ahead and put that on a section and divide that out, when you go up to this option, you can specifically put that you were wanting to go to the section based on answer and then go to those sections. So it's a little pre-planning. You want to be able to section this out, add your sections based on every PLC. You may want to have an arts and humanities or um, your practical living, and you can just add that section and then add them as an option and easily add to this form. Um, so Chase, awesome work. Um, I think that I can't wait because that's what teachers want. They want that personalized feedback, not just the generic feedback that um, you know everyone's getting. So uh, kudos to you for putting that into um, you know into into teachers' hands. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Corey. That was awesome. for me. <laughs> um, Elaine is now going to talk a little bit about the difference between using a add-on like Autocrat versus Formula because we featured both um, as tools that you could use to couple with the Google Form to give feedback to teachers. So, Elaine. 
talk to us about that. Yes. Um, okay. So we talked about um, in the past about um, Formule and Autocrat, um, but now we've talked about Formule and now Autocrat is um, in the past. But what's the difference? So both of them um, actually um, do some amazing tools to enhance your Google Forms. Um, it is an add-on, which is free for um, either one of them. But for Formule. Um, Um, benefits of um, Autocrat is limited pretty much to what um, docs and uh, slides are capable of doing because you can, um, well, docs mainly um, and PDF. Um, so when you are using Autocrat, it requires for you to um, send emails, but also in, insert all, those, all that data from your forms into an actual Google Doc or you could create it a PDF. So, um, and some some that choose to use Formule, that gets quite um, messy. So um, it's not as, uh, you have to merge a bunch of things together and it gets in there automatically put into your drive. But um, both of them send emails, but um, Formule, like I said, does not use Google Docs um, and PDF, but then Autocrat does. Um, you can send personalized info um, with both of them and um, send out to the masses or individually. Um, and then uh, both of them also send on a data entry. Um, so when a form is filled out, they can be sent out, but you can also um, make it as a time trigger, as Chase had said. So both amazing tools um, made by, uh, I believe, similar companies, but um, Formule, um, is just set up a little bit different and it um, can get a lot more out if you have multiple triggers, um, um, as Chase showed us with his um, different teachers and different um, subjects. So um, pretty awesome, pretty awesome stuff for us, for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elaine. Brooke, have you seen uh, any other questions or comments come in through Twitter or our live feed? We can't hear you. Oh, you're going to talk to us about the swivel. Yeah. What, what about now? My microphone must not be working on my awesome. head. Awesome. Yep. Talk to us. Buddy. All right. So I have a swivel right here. So I was going to show it to you. Um, I know that it's been kind of crazy because I've been running around the office literally uh, with my computer. So my apologies for the, <laughs> for the distraction. But I have got a swivel because as I told you, we're having a meeting earlier. So I just thought I would show it live action here. So this is, this is the swivel base, um, and it looks like to me, and Chase, feel free to, to pipe in here, but it looks like you're going to lay your iPad across here, um, and this base is what turns, and then this right here is going to be um, your, what you, the teachers would wear that's going to follow the recording um, wherever they're going in the room, and it's also going to record their voice. So you can see it's not a whole lot. I, I don't think it's a whole lot to set up. It's pretty simple. Um, so anyway, I just had it handy, and I was actually, our director of assessment was in there um, when, I, when I tried to pop on a second ago, and then she got a phone call and had to run out. So I was going to get her to chime in on this conversation um, because they actually – wanted to use this swivel um, and this teacher coacher feedback kind of model for a completely different reason. Um, but anyway, I think there's lots of implications once you make the decision to purchase the swivel. It's not just, um, you know, for one particular use. So Elaine, um, do you want to chime in there on how you use your, for? Yeah. Our district just got the swivel as well, um, and we're getting to use it for a live feed for students with disabilities um, that can't um, physically be in the classroom for emotional disabilities or something like that. But it's um, um, paired with a live Google Hangout is working amazingly to, to um, able, we call it digital inclusion. Or so, you know, we want full inclusion. Um, but then I was able to collaborate yesterday with the teacher, and she said that they, um, he has gotten more instruction that within with using these tools. So um, definitely an awesome, an awesome product that can go a totally different level. So awesome! Thank you, everyone. Brooke hooked it up. Brooke for the win, going and finding a swivel, and I love it that you're at an event right now. 
and someone's actually using a swivel and we've been tweeting about it talking about using it to did chase did you call it playing tape what do coaches call that running tape what is that from the the coaches uh knowing film, film don't lie uh i don't i don't know how i said it, but we always say film don't lie play tape break film, okay. break film don't film lie tape. what was that courtney you're a coach's wife what is it called what was it said breaking down the tape there you go breaking yep. down the tape uh courtney where does your husband serve as a football coach out there is he the floyd county high school football coach courtney uh oh i don't know if courtney can hear us that's okay can you hear us what i said is he, where does your husband coach football he is in Floyd County at Prestonsburg High School. Okay, so you yeah. know all about a lot, of, a lot of coaching. Yes, <laughs> a lot of coaching. You know all about running tape. Thank you. Okay, um, so what a powerful show, Chase. We all knew you were a rock star. I, I'm sure lots of people are going to be reaching out for your support. We always love that you start with culture and you really uh, speak to the importance of having strong culture and how these digital tools can help impact that as well. So kudos to you for all your work and your teachers. You have a rock star staff out there at Caverna and I love following all of you on Twitter. Um, so Chase, we're very excited because you were here uh, on our show and we are about to make a very important announcement. So Chase, what are your school colors out there in Caverna? Purple and white. Purple and white. Right. So uh, we have a very special announcement to make. We are happy to announce that Kentucky Go Digital is going purple. Yay! So Brooke, can you roll out uh, our new logo to everyone and talk to us about it? Here it comes. All right, there it is. Purple, purple. So we'll be working in the next uh, week or so to make our shift to purple. Um, I'm sure many of you Kentucky Go Digital leaders get the reference immediately. Courtney or Elaine, anything you'd like to say about the shift to purple? Want to chime in? I'm game. We have purple in our district and um, lots, of, um, lots of purple cows across Kentucky. So I think it fits quite nicely. Awesome. Courtney, what do you think? I think we're having a little bit of a feed issue out there. What about you, Chase? What are you thinking about this? Look at you smiling. Well, of course I of course I love it. So I mean it's it's the color of Caverna. So I'm I'm always pleased when we get to rep purple. Awesome stuff. Okay. Well, until next time, Elaine, why don't you tell everyone how they can stay connected to Kentucky Go Digital? Thanks, Chase, for coming on today. Elaine, take us away. Get involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow us on Twitter.